thank you, Senators. I think we're now moving. Senator Thorpe, you're going to move your amendment. Acting Deputy President, sorry. Uh, the Australian Greens move uh, amendments on number one and two on sheet 1207 by leave together. Uh, is leave granted? Leave is granted. Yes, thank you, Senator leave Thorpe. So you move those amendments? Uh, yes, I'd like to speak to the amendments. Thank you. I'm happy to rise to seek the support of my fellow senators for my amendment, particularly Senator Patrick, as you seem pretty keen to support this shoddy legislation on the condition that there is a minimum number of judges in the legislation. I want to be clear, I completely oppose the merging of these courts because, as the National and Aboriginal and Tyrell Torres Strait Islander Legal Services have made clear, this merger will not fix the root causes of the problems of the Family Law Court. At the moment, there are 32 judges currently listed on the Family Court's website as of 17 February who would become Division I judges, not including the Family Court of Western Australia judges. The government's amendment of requiring 25 judges doesn't make any sense. It's going backwards from the current number of 32 judges. It does not make any sense to go backwards at this time, particularly to a figure of 25 in view of the crippling backlogs and workloads facing the courts. The Chief Justice made a statement in November 2019 that at least one extra judge is required in every major registry would make a massive difference to the backlog. That would make it at least 40 judges. The chief judge said, and I quote, an extra judge in every major registry would make a massive difference to backlogs, quoted in Tony Keem, a family court affair. Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. Um, one Nation will not be supporting the Greens amendment on page 1207 with regards to increasing the judges from 25 to 40. I was involved in the committee that actually looked into this, the merger of the two courts. And after hearing evidence that was given, and especially being involved as deputy chair in the family law court matter uh, present underfoot, and the advices th that we actually heard, the, yes, there is a back backlog in the court system. Yes, we are the judges are terribly underworked. But what has what has um, come to what we've come to the conclusion? My conclusion, why I'm not uh, going to support this, is that. It's not really more judges that we need, it's more registrars and their support staff that we need. It has been shown that by putting registrars and senior registrars into the positions, they can actually triage and they can m hear the mentions and even contravention of orders, and they can do a lot of the work of the judges. Even in determinations, they can actually hear this. That has been supported by judges and also um, the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice as well. I'd like to put out, point out to Senator Thorpe, by appointing judges into the federal courts, their appointment is till they're 70 years of age. They can't be sacked unless they're sacked by both houses of parliament. That is rarely ever done. When you have registrars appointed, they can be utilised when needed in the court system and we can bring in more or less. They are doing the work and helping the judges. So therefore, the cost to the taxpayer, a federal court judge in the family law court, I should say, in the family law court one, is basically costing the taxpayers approximately five hundred thousand dollars a year. That is a huge cost to the taxpayers, and we found that a lot of these judges um, are stressed, a lot of them are overworked, and that hence a lot actually take a lot of time away from their work because of this. And they're still being paid, and yet the work is not being completed, which could be carried on by registrars. So hence on that, 
Um, people do need to hear, get the cases heard, but I truly do believe that if we actually, instead of putting the more money into judges, because in the family law courts, their average of 27 judges heard approximately about 500 cases a year, yet the federal circuit court judges hear about five to 600 cases a year each. So we need to um, look at clearly how we're going to do it, and I do support the Attorney General's move of the minimum number of judges being at 25, the appointment of more registrars. There has been a lot of streamlining that has been happening in the court system to actually um, address people's needs and um, their submissions are being taken up under the Lighthouse project, which is working extremely well. I think the Attorney General is doing an excellent job addressing the needs of the courts. I must say that the Labor Party are actually complains about what the Liberal Party has done nothing in the last seven years. Well, then I'd ask the same question of the Labor Party. What have they done in their time when they were in Parliament here? Absolutely nothing because the increase has happened. So it's all right to point the finger and you have your say now what the Liberal Party has done, but the Labor Party have done absolutely nothing themselves. This is a way forward. I have been involved in this for many years, have raised the issues continually in this House. I have reviewed it possibly more so than hardly any other member in this place. So I, I feel that I am very much across this and I am supporting the government's um, bill. I will not support the Greens' amendment to this. And um, thank you. Thank you, Senator Hanson. Senator Watt. Oh, Senator Watt. Senator Patrick. Senator Patrick. Just a couple of questions uh, to the, to the uh, minister, in, in assistant the attorney, in, in respect of uh, this amendment. Uh, these laws, which the, the Greens say they won't support, if, if they were not passed tonight, what's the minimum number, number of justices uh, in, in, under the current legislation? Um, Senator Patrick, there is no minimum under the current legislation. Senator Patrick. So what, what this... Uh, what, what the government's amendment has done has significantly raised the, the bar. It, I just want to get an understanding. That's not the number that the attorney is setting. That's a safeguard, as, I, as far as I understand it. Is that, is that correct? I mean, you're appointing, in fact, you announced an appointment of a, a, an additional justice tonight. So I just want to make sure that's a safeguard rather than a target number. Correct, Senator Patrick. The um, number that's been specified in the amendment is a minimum floor. Um, it's not to suggest that is going to be a fixed number at any time, and it does represent an increase from zero under the current arrangements. Thank you. Senator Carr. Uh, Madam Acting Deputy President, um, Senator Stoker, you uh, participated in Senate inquiry with me, and you were uh, obviously performing a different role here this evening. Um, I'm wondering whether you recall the Senate actually being advised that there were, in fact, I think five judicial vacancies uh, at the moment, and that's not including the four additional positions which were announced in the budget. And I'm wondering, can you uh, seek from the officers some advice as to why those vacancies haven't been filled? And in so doing, perhaps you could also advise the chamber as to how it is that uh, the Attorney General, which I understand has all given significant notice of impending retirements, why it's taken so long to fill the vacancies? Minister. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Thank you, Senator Carr. Um, I can answer that question, and it is um, true that those vacancies exist, and so your data is right on that front. Um, they are not yet filled because um, a process that you would expect Senator Carr um, would be done with, with care and due consideration is underway. And these are important appointments. It's important we get them right. And so um, it is the case that the work is being done at the moment to fill those ones um, as soon as that process is complete. Thank you. Senator Carr. 
Well, see, I appreciate that the, um, the, the Attorney General would be anxious to make sure he got the right appointments, but one could also be concerned that if it takes a long time to fill vacancies, and remember he started from a premise that he didn't want to fill vacancies at all, it does imply that there is uh, a lack of real motivation to fill vacancies. I mean, it's a perfectly uh, I think it's, it's obviously the circumstances would suggest that the, the Attorney-General has had a long time to fill the vacancies. Does the Attorney-General, I ask you specifically, intend to fill the vacancies? When will that occur? No good saying to me, oh, I've just got to make sure I get the right person. It takes a bit more than that. And given the lack of certainty there has been about this uh, Attorney-General's interest in actually maintaining the administrative uh, efficiency of this court, how is it that it's taken so long to actually fill the vacancies that occur? Minister. Thank you. Um, Senator Carr, I'll, I'll clarify something I just said. You gave a total number of vacancies. Um, that number is correct, although it should be clarified that most of those are in the Federal Circuit Court. Only one is in the Family Court, as they currently stand. Um, and there is an intention to fill the vacancies. That process is on, underway. Um, and I've otherwise answered the question. Uh, Senator Lambie? Yeah. Yes, Senator Thank Lambie. Thank you, um, Acting uh, Deputy President. Uh, Madam Deputy President. Um, how many people have actually put their hands up to do that job, and when did they do that? How many, how many weeks ago did they do that? So could you give me a number, please, and how many have actually put up their hands to do that? Minister. I don't have that information, and it's not something that is um, ordinarily one which is aired um, prior to appointment. Senator Lambie. So we've got positions out there that need to fill. We've got a backlog, and you can't tell me, which is nothing in confidence, of how many people have put their hands up to fill that job so I can determine who's being lazy here and why the job isn't being done. Now, how many people have put their, up their hand, hand to do that job? How long ago? Come on, if you've got nothing to hide, just give the numbers. This is getting ridiculous. This is an embarrassment for the Liberal Party. Minister. Thank you. Um, Senator Lambie, it's a process that's cabinet in confidence. Um, it's being done the same way that it always has been done, and um, it is being carefully considered, and those appointments will be made um, in due course. Senator Lambie. Thank you, um, Madam Acting Deputy President. Could you please tell me exactly what the process is and what's the average time for that process and what is usually how many put their hand up? Um, it's a process that's managed um, in consultation with the heads of jurisdictions, the chief justices, um, often consultation with members of um, the representative bodies for the professions. Um, it is a um, a process that varies in the length of time that it takes, depending on the complexity of those consultations. Um, it doesn't have you know, the usual recruitment time frame that you might have for hiring um, an office clerk or something of that nature, um, but it is the method that has always been used. It's a cabinet and conference confidence process, and um, it is underway. Senator Lambie. So, let me get this right. We have a problem in our courts, and you can't tell me a time frame that it takes to pick for the Attorney General to pick a mate to put in there as a job, because that's exactly how it works, the process. We all know how it works, so please don't give me the runaround. So the Australian people would like to know, what is going to be the time process it is going to take you, or take the Liberal Party or the Attorney General, to, put, to, to get these jobs filled? And I think it's a fair question, and I think it's a serious question. And the people of Australia would like to know, especially those people, not like yourself that probably have never been through a family court system, but for those out there that have got kids that are feeling that pain, for goodness sake, could you just answer the question, please? Minister. Senator Lambie, I don't accept the premise of your question, um, which was rather pejorative, um, but it will, as a process, take as long as it takes to get it right. Um, it is underway, and I rely on my earlier answers. Uh, Senator Thorpe. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Uh, Minister, Justice Forrest in Brisbane resigned a fortnight ago. This is a busy registry and his honour should be replaced as soon as possible. 
In addition, there are 10 judges due to retire across the family court and federal court in 2021 and 2022. These judges should be promptly replaced with new appointments to avoid exacerbating existing delays. Further judges may also be required to work through COVID-19 backlogs in view of the court's reliance on audiovisual link hearing since March 2020. Could you uh, please explain what the process is to uh, ensure that they are all backfilled in a timely manner? Minister. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Senator Thorpe, um, Justice Forrest's announcement of um, his Honour's intention to retire came prior to um, the prescribed age of 70, and so when there is a retirement um, that is uh, out of the ordinary expectation and it is, um, I guess, a little earlier than expected, there's sometimes a little more time that's required for that to be filled, um, but that process is underway. Um, I don't expect it's far, um, but we are taking every, um, every step we can to make sure that those appointments are made as timely as is possible because, like you, we appreciate that they are important to getting through the um, critical work of the court. Senator Watt. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Um, I just thought it probably was important that Labor outlines our position in relation to the Greens amendment. Mm -hmm. um, Labor supports this amendment on the basis that this parliament should always be calling on the government to increase resources to a family law system that this government has starved of resources. Of course, the way in which additional resources can be allocated most efficiently is a fundamentally important question. Labor does not support this bill. We do not support the new court structure the government has put forward. So Labor has not considered whether increasing the number of judges in Division 1 to 40 would, if this bill passes the parliament, be the best way of allocating additional resources. So this does not represent Labor policy. Our commitments to take to the Australian people will be considered in the usual way and be made public before the next election. However, we support this amendment because, at the very least, that is a matter that this government should be required to consider. Um, while I'm on my feet, I might just pose a question to the minister as well. Uh, the government claims that these bills will increase court efficiency. How many judicial vacancies are there currently on the Federal Circuit Court? Minister. Um, I understand there are four. Senator Watt. Um, the government announced four new judicial positions on the Federal Circuit Court in the last budget. Why haven't those four vacancies been filled? Minister. Um, my understanding is that those four positions were um, provided for in a, an instrument that was a combined measure that is subject to a disallowance motion. Senator Watt. Um, so a disallowance motion has been lodged, which would in some way interfere with the delivery of the government's budget commitment. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So the revenue thank you very much, Madam Mackin, Deputy President. Um, my instructions are that um, the revenue that would come um, from the matters dealt with in the combined measure that is the um, that is the subject of the disallowance motion is what's necessary to fund the four judges. Senator Carr. So, Senator, so I'll be clear about this. The, the government announced an additional four positions nearly a year ago, hasn't filled them. Is that that's the case? Sorry, uh, Senator Carr. I, just, I want to be clear. So, and I just want so I've understood you. Announced a year ago in a budget and hasn't filled them. When we're about to go into the next year's budget. So, when you say there are four vacancies, does that include the four that were announced in the budget last year? Is it is the real number in fact eight? Uh, Minister, um, just to clarify, Senator Carr, um, it is the four new ones that are the subject of the um, instrument that is uh, the subject of the disallowance motion. The four older are vacant. Yeah, the ones, the ones that are from other retirements, um, are the ones that are vacant. So. If there are four that were announced last year. 
plus the fall from vacancies because of retirements, if we were to take the government's word announced in the budget last year that there were going to be four additional spots and they haven't been filled, it surely would be arguable that there are eight vacancies. Minister. Senator Carr, that's right. Uh, the only caveat on that is to say that um, the four new ones uh, we, we can't fill until we have certainty on the ability to fund it. Senator Carr. I find that an extraordinary proposition a government with a budget this, the size of the Commonwealth of Australia can't fill four judges' vacancy. And, then, uh, and I say that in the context where, again, Senator Stoker, um, surely you were surprised when the evidence that was presented to the Senate inquiry into this bill pointed out that the Federal Circuit Court was dealing with some the average uh, judge uh, on that court was dealing with some 330 matters each, and the size of the average—that's that is the size of the average docket—and you'd understand these uh, terms far better than I'm. Just you know, I'm not one of these legal eagles, but I do find the fact that you ask a judge, average judge, three has 330 cases each, that some one judge had 600 cases. Eight judges had more than 500 cases. 26 judges had more than 400 cases. 41 judges have more than 300 matters each. And as I say, not, I'm not claiming to be a lawyer, but it strikes me an extraordinary amount of work for individual judges. And it would surely in a very strong case that this court is overburdened and that one of the consequences of that for families who are having to face the misery of going before the circuit court are having to wait years to have their matters heard. So my concern is, well, can you confirm those figures that I've given you? Is it the case? And secondly, why is the Attorney General so unwilling to fill these vacancies, which on my argument is eight vacancies at the moment, given the extraordinary workload that exists for the judges that are currently sitting? And finally, would this not lead to a situation where we'll get even more resignations because of the workload pressures on, on the court itself? Minister. Thank you, Senator Carr. There's a few things in that, in that question. The first is to say that, broadly speaking, your estimates of which judges have how much on their dockets is, is right on the um, on the question on notice that um, was provided to you um, a little while ago, uh, I don't accept the uh, the premise of your question that says um, there is no intention to um, fill these vacancies. Um, there is a process underway for um, the four retirement-based vacancies to be filled, um, and that is in the process of being. Um, selected and appointed through the ordinary cabinet and confidence method. Um, the next matter to deal with is um, what is driving uh, those retirements. There's no evidence to suggest that those who have retired have done so because they are um, unhappy with the workload that they have. Um, and I'm the first person to recognise that the judges of the Federal Circuit Court are extremely hardworking and um, they will be assisted in that workload when they um, have more colleagues with which to share that load. Um, that's why we are in the process of filling those vacancies. Um, it is worth noting, though, that the Federal Circuit Court at present operates a docket system, and that means, um, as you know, Senator Carr, each um, case is allocated to a particular judge who manages it from its commencement through to disposition. So while one might have uh, several hundred matters on their docket, it doesn't mean they all have to go to trial and all require a judgment. Many of those um, either settle or are dealt with um, in an extempore or immediate type um, oral reasoning or judgment. And um, it's only the case that um, a mere 15.5 per cent are ultimately judicially determined in the sense that they get a, a final ruling. Um, and of those, many of them are dealt with in the, the much faster ex tempore immediate oral reasoning method, uh, rather than having to reserve a judgment and do the work that's associated with preparing a written judgment. So the point is to say that there is great variation in the amount of 
burden that each of those cases presents. Some are quite small, some are much larger. Um, and so, uh, while there is variation in those numbers, they aren't always comparing apples and apples, if I might use that expression. Senator Carr. Um, and, and the concern is about resourcing. I think that's a consistent pattern of the contributions made, particularly on this. this, this. Well, this is the, the lack of resourcing. This is the, the goes to the heart of the maladministration of the court. So I'd ask you, um, Senator State, could you tell me what was the deal that the Attorney General's done with Senator Patrick in exchange for Senator Patrick's support for this bill, and specifically, what? is the deal in regard to additional resources for the family law system and in which state will those resources be deployed? Minister. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Um, Senator Carr, um, the entirety of the arrangements associated with this bill uh, were outlined <laughs> in my summing up speech and um, I refer to it in answer to the question. Senator Lambie and then Senator Hanson. Senator Lambie. Um, acting Madam Deputy President, um, I see that um, Senator Patrick's back in here. May we get the opportunity for Senator Patrick to be able to stand up and maybe tell us what the deal was that he completed, completed with um, the Liberal Party? Well, is that a question, Senator Lambie? Yes, it is. Thank you. It is. Madam Thank Deputy you. President. Minister? Uh, Senator Patrick. Um, to him, I do. So I'd like to ask Senator Patrick if he would like to answer that question on what the deal was with the Liberal, with the Liberal Party. Uh, well, Senator Lambie, uh, I think you can ask the question, and it's a matter for Senator Patrick in his next intervention uh, when he gets the call if he wishes to respond to it. But I think before that, I had Senator Hanson. Did you want to respond, Senator Patrick, or in your next? And, uh, okay, thank you. I'm happy to respond very briefly, but it's the same answer as the minister. She, um, it was uh, detailed in the statement made, a summary statement made by the minister. Thank you, Senator Patrick. Senator Hanson. Minister, could you clarify with the people of Australia and, and in this chamber, um, with the federal circuit court judges, do they only handle? And they're talking about 330 dockets to 500 to 600 dockets. Is that purely? Family law court matters. Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Um, Senator Hanson, it is true to say that the jurisdiction of the Federal Circuit Court involves um, a family law jurisdiction, a general federal law jurisdiction, and a smaller um, employment and workplace, fair work type jurisdiction. Um, the vast majority of the work of the court is in family law, and there are um, around 40 judges, the overwhelming number of judges in the court, um, who deal exclusively with family law. Uh, Senator Lambie was to her feet, then I'll come to you, Senator Watts. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ap Acting Deputy President. I just, um, I, I just wanted to ask you in reference to your you were saying before that uh, each case has uh, one judge from commencement to end. Uh, is that is that normal practice? Is that that the normality? It's just one judge. Is, is it? Is there usually? Does it ever change over to another judge? Minister. Um, thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President, Senator Lambie. It's a docket system um, rather than a, uh, a strict rule that says you can only have one judge. It means that, as ordinarily, as a matter of the management of the court, there is a practice of having one judge that looks after a single matter throughout, but it's not exclusive, and sometimes there are um, exceptions to the rule. It's just a general practice. Senator Lambie. Yes, oh, thank you, Acting Deputy President. So um, this management, how chaotic would a court be if one person had six judges before it even got to a courtroom? How could you possibly explain that that's going on into a court system? Minister. Thank you very much. Um, Senator Lambie, uh, I can't speculate on a hypothetical case or um, talk about this in the abstract. 
Um, but if you want to refer a particular case um, to me, I'm happy to deal with that offline for you. Senator Lambie, is this on the same line of questioning? Yes, it is. Senator Thank you, Acting Deputy Speaker. Yeah, sure. I'm going to go to Senator Carr. Yeah, I want to know how chaotic it is when you go into a fair work and before you get to court, and that case is mine, and you have six judges over three years. Now, don't you tell me that our courtrooms are not in chaos. There is something terrible going on, and I wouldn't be the only one there. How many other cases out there where there's been more than two judges over a period of time to do a court case? Minister. Um, look, I can't deal with um, individual cases in the context of debating this bill, um, but we're talking about family law in this context, and if you've got a fair work type matter, we'll, we'll deal with it offline. Senator, Senator Carr. Thank you very much. Um, Minister, I'm interested um, if you could please clarify, be able to clarify something for me. You said that the uh, deal that between the Attorney General and Senator Patrick was uh, outlined in your summing up uh, statement. Um, and I'm wondering if you could be a little bit more specific for us. Uh, I, I thought I heard what you were saying there, but I don't recall any detail being expressed on the issue of resourcing. Uh, so I could ask you again, what is the commitment of the government in terms of extra resourcing for the family law system as a result of the arrangements you've entered into with Senator Patrick? Minister. Um, Senator Carr, I'm, I'm more than happy to reread my summing up speech, but I don't really think that's necessary. Um, I, rely on, I, rely on, I rely on it in full, where I have itemised absolutely everything um, by way of the resourcing that's relevant to this bill. Senator Carr. Well, it's a very straightforward question. What are the additional resources that the minister is committed to provide as a result of the arrangements entered into with Senator Patrick? and which state will those resources be directed to? Minister. Um, Senator Carr, as promised, I'm very happy to read from my summing up speech the, the bits that you may have missed in, in the context of the summing up earlier. And I'll, I'll quote from it. As part of the implementation of this bill, the government will also provide a further Division I judge, two additional Division II judges, and an extrajudicial registrar to support the Adelaide Registry, and an additional $14.3 million for further legal assistance in South Australia to be used to establish a pilot program for family law matters. In addition, the government will re-establish the Family Law Council to provide further guidance on the family law system and the government recognises the advocacy and support of Senator Patrick for these initiatives. Senator Carr. You're providing an extra judge and some other matters in Adelaide. But last week, the Law Society of Tasmania president told the Advocate newspaper that following the retirement of the Hobart-based judge in November last year, the Morrison government's failure to appoint a new judge to hear family law cases in Tasmania is leading to unacceptable delays and angst for Tasmanian families. The president of the Law Society, Trevor McKenna, told the newspaper that he had raised the matter directly with the Attorney General before the judge retired, and yet no replacement has been appointed. So let me quote directly. The lack of replacement judge means the state is left with one hard-working specialist judge doing the work of two judges tackling difficult issues including family violence, child abuse and mental health. The delays in hearing cases exacerbate the emotions flowing from people separating. It is a concern not only to the legal profession but to many Tasmanian families coming before the court there has been no announcement. There is a single judge working tirelessly to assist families in resolving their complex disputes. It is unreasonable and unacceptable to expect a single judge should have undertaken the work of two judges." End of quote. 
So I'd ask, given that there's additional resources being found for Adelaide, why is the Morrison government forcing Tasmanian families to wait months and months for a replacement judge? Why is it that this level of discrimination occurs so that you can buy a vote in this chamber? Yes, Dad. Um, thank you, Senator Carr. The process for um, appointing a replacement for the vacancy in Tasmania is underway, and um, we anticipate that that vacancy will be resolved in the not too distant future. Senator, Senator Lambie was on her feet. I'll come to you, Senator Watt. Uh, yeah, um, thank you, um, Acting Deputy. Uh, President, I was just wondering, the people of Tasmania would like to know uh, what sort of timeline are we looking at, at here? Do you think it will be before the next election, before Christmas, Easter next year? There's a bit of a bog going on down there, so how long do you think these families, if you don't mind showing them respect, will have to wait for that judge to be replaced? Can I just have a timeline? I think that's a fair question and it's a fair ask. That's my first question. And my second question would be, if the Attorney General doesn't have time, then maybe you let the people the law, uh, the, the law people in Tasmania actually pick the judge themselves if the Attorney General can't do it in a timely fashion. Can that be done, since you can't tell me the steps that you actually have to take anyway to pick one? So why don't you just let the people of Tasmania do that? Minister. Thank you. I'll take that last part as something of a comment, um, but there is a process underway that is cabinet in confidence. It is dealing with the process of appointing um, a new judge for Tasmania, and um, I don't have anything to add to what's been previously discussed. Senator Watts. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I, um, thank you for that information, Minister. I did take down the uh, price of the deal with Senator, Senator Patrick, but I missed. So it was one Division One judge, two Division Two judges, one registrar, all in the Adelaide registry. I missed the figure, though, for was it uh, community legal services or something? Else, apart from judges and registrars, Minister, fourteen point three million dollars for further legal assistance in South Australia to be used to establish a pilot program for family law matters. In addition, the government will re-establish the Family Law Council to provide further guidance on the family law system, and um, that's pretty much the rest of the paragraph. Senator Watts, and that fourteen point three million—that's a one-off figure, or is that an annual figure? Four oh, sorry, over four years. Senator Watts. Uh, so, what is the total cost for this deal with Senator Patrick? Minister. Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Uh, the total amount that's allocated to fund those items will be um, disclosed as part of the ordinary budget processes. Senator Watts. So you're not willing to tell the Senate how much you bought Senator Patrick's vote for? Minister. I don't accept the premise of the question. Uh, Senator Watts. Was point of order, yes. I think uh, Senator Watts is impugning me in respect of suggesting that I can be bought uh, on a, on a, on a um, uh, on a vote. That is simply not the case, and I'm happy to speak we're to that. So, so I just can't. ask that he withdraw that. I'm happy to speak to the history of my engagement with the Attorney General, but I think he should withdraw that. Senator Watt, do you wish to respond? I'm happy to withdraw. We can talk about a deal instead, a dodgy deal instead. Is that is that preferable, Senator Patrick? Um, the Okay, well, so Senator, you're not willing to tell the Senate the total price of this deal, but I'm going to take a rough stab that a judge, a judge's salary is three, four hundred thousand dollars a year, so possibly more. Um, so between three judges and a registrar, we're looking at another another million or two dollars on top of this fourteen point three million dollars. So the total cost uh, of this deal with Senator Patrick to obtain his vote and his support uh, is certainly more than $15 million. Minister, do you wish to respond to that? Um, Mr Acting Deputy President, um, 
Senator Watts free to, to estimate all he likes. Um, the matters will be set out in the ordinary way in the budget process. Uh, Senator McKim was seeking the call. And I've... Uh, uh, thank you, Acting Deputy President. I thank Senator Watt. I'm sure he'll, um, he'll have another opportunity. Um, I'm going to say back of the envelope, probably north of $20 million, when you consider that we're talking about four years here. Um, but I actually wanted to go back to what I thought was a pretty extraordinary um, admission, if I heard you correctly, Minister, in an earlier contribution that you made. And I'll, I'll phrase it as a question to you um, in case I have misheard you or misunderstood you. It, have you um, informed the Senate that for the four um, new judges, I think you categorised them, for the revenue for those judges, you are relying on the massive hike in filing fees for migration matters in the Federal Circuit Court, which is currently the subject of a disallowance moved by Senator Griff. Uh, are you, uh, did you just inform um, this chamber that in order to put on the four new judges, you are relying on hitting um, people who wish to file on migration matters, who are overwhelmingly um, refugees people seeking asylum in this country or temporary visa holders who want to file on migration matters in this country when you've spent billions of dollars a year torturing refugees in offshore detention centres on Manus Island and Nauru, when you spend hundreds of millions of dollars every year on our punitive onshore immigration detention system, and yet you want to hit up the same cohort of people with um, increased filing fees in the range of 450 to 500 per cent increases which you are trying to introduce. And you're saying that you need that revenue in order to fill um, four, uh, in order to pay the wages of four new judges. Is, is that what you just told the Senate? And I'll leave it there. And if, if that is, if I'm accurate and I've understood you correctly, I will um, have a response. But is that right that you are saying that you need that massive increase in filing fees of nearly 500 per cent uh, in, uh, in hikes on filing fees for migration matters in the Federal Circuit Court, that you need that revenue in order to, um, to pay the wages of four new judges? Is that what you've just told the Senate? Minister. Um, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Um, Senator McKim, I'm glad you've raised that because it gives me an opportunity to um, provide some clarity. The arrangements for the four um, additional judges to whom um, I referred to in the context of the disallowance motion um, are for new judges that have been allocated for the Federal Circuit Court, um, but the work that they do is related to migration. And um, so, strictly speaking, their, uh, their workload won't be in the family space that's um, addressed to this bill, though it should be said that the um, vacancies of attrition um, have a relevance to these, these family matters. Um, but it is, it is true to say that it is absolutely relevant to um, the, the funding of those additional migration Federal Circuit Court judges um, that there is a um, fiscal responsibility in the way that we operate that court, and that means that the fees associated with, for instance, filings for migration cases will be applied to cover costs associated with dealing with migration cases, such as the costs associated with those judges. Senator McKim. Look, it's the great Liberal dream, isn't it? A user pays justice system. I mean, don't worry yourself one iota about access to justice. I mean, seriously, you get a go. What is it? You have a go to get a go in this country, according to the Prime Minister, but you only get access to justice if you've got a fat wallet or deep pockets. That, that's what you've just got up and told this Senate. And I make the point again. This is the same cohort of people that you are happy to spend billions with a beat of taxpayer dollars every year in establishing um, offshore detention centres on Manus Island, on Nauru. You are still spending north of $1 billion a year, even though um, the numbers in those centres, thankfully and belatedly, have, uh, have come down significantly. You're prepared to spend that money. You're prepared to spend money running an intensely punitive onshore detention regime 
in this country where innocent people who've done nothing wrong are imprisoned arbitrarily and indefinitely at a massive cost to the taxpayer, and then you're saying you have to come in and hit the same cohort of people who are trying to appeal a politi politicised decisions made by um, government agencies to deny them refugee status, to deny them mo the migration status that they want. They want to file an appeal against that into the Federal Circuit Court, and you want to put their fees up by nearly five. 100% in order to fund these new judges. I've got an idea for you, Minister. Just fund them out of a consolidated fund. That's the way you should be funding new judges. You don't need to increase um, fees by nearly 500% in migration matters, uh, pricing a whole cohort of people out of the justice system, a cohort, I might add, some of whom are denied work rights by your government, many of whom have been recently or over the last two or three years cut off income support by your government. They've got no money. They're begging for food. The charity and refugee sector has had to step up to feed the, and house these people because you treat them like they are criminals and like, like they are dogs, but they are actually people, human beings, with children and families that you, your government actions have resulted in them get, getting kicked out onto the street. Many of them can't work because you won't give them work rights. Many of them have got no income because you've cut them off our social security system, and now you want to increase their filing fees by 500 per cent. I've got an idea. Fund the new judges straight out of the consolidated fund. Senator Lambie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. I'd just like to know whether um, yourself or the Attorney General has had the courage to stand in front of Senator Griff and tell him what is going on here with his disallowance motion that he you intends to put up, and what you're doing, and what what you intend, where that money you intend though, that money to come from. If you know he's doing that disallowance motion, have you had the courage or the decency? either yourself or the Attorney General, to go and see Senator Griff in relation to his disallowance motion. Minister. Um, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Senator Lambie, these matters were made clear in the Senate when they came up. They're on the record. Senator Watts. Thank you, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. I do just want to pursue this issue a little further. Um, the what, so what we've learned tonight, and I think it's the first time this has actually been on the record, is that these these new four uh, judge judges' positions will be funded from fee increases uh, that the government is proposing in migration matters uh, that are now the subject of a disallowance motion moved by Senator Griff. I, I will have some follow-up questions, but can I just confirm that that is correct? Um, Esther. Thank you. The, the filing fees for the Federal Circuit Court were, if one were to do a comparison over time, um, quite low for, for many years compared to what was um, imposed in the AAT and in, in the Federal Court or, or the Family Court. Um, the, as part of the 2020 to 21 budget, the Morrison government is providing $35.7 million in funding to provide additional judicial and registrar resources for the Federal Circuit Court's migration, primarily, um, and, but also in the family law jurisdiction. So I'll, I'll del delve into the detail of that so that um, it's not just the broad brush answers I gave earlier. I'll give you some precision um, since. I don't know what you've um, it's piqued your interest. That will support an additional three general federal law judges, accompanied by two additional registrars. So when I say general federal law, we're talking about the migration work predominantly, um, and one additional family law judge. So that makes up the four, um, accompanied by five additional registrars, as well as serving to increase the base funding for the court. So this increase in judicial and registrar resourcing will allow the court to resolve more matters every year, which will assist in addressing the backlog in migration matters and reduce the time families with family law matters spend before the courts after separation. So um, the additional resourcing is offset by an increase to the application fees that I've referred to a moment ago for migration litigants in the Federal Circuit Court. Um, and as I mentioned a moment ago, currently the Federal Circuit Court application fees for migration matters are significantly lower than the fee that's imposed, for instance, in the AAT. So this change will adjust the Federal Circuit Court application fee 
from $690 to $3,330 so that it is set at the midpoint between the fees in the lower AAT and the higher federal court fee. Um, that's so that applicants continue to have access to the court system. Um, Sorry, they will continue, we'll continue to make sure that applicants have access to the court system by maintaining a full fee exemption where paying the fee would result in financial hardship and will be accompanied by a new partial fee exemption that's set at half the full rate, which will deal with many of the circumstances that were referred to um, in the commentary that was given by Senator McKim a little bit earlier. So, by way of example, of the more than 25,000 migration lodgements in the AAT, in 2018-19, only 3.6 per cent of them sought a fee reduction, um, and less than 2 per cent of those qualified for one. Um, importantly, the revenue from that change, um, as I, I guess began at the outset, is being reinvested in the courts to improve the efficiency and the experience of court users, um, including to provide um, assistance for families navigating a separation and for applicants in migration matters. Senator Watts. Okay, so thank you, Minister. I take from that then that there, um, the fee increases that are being proposed uh, and are subject to a disallowance motion, which only apply to migration matters, that the, the fee increases being proposed um, to migrate for migration matters, which are the subject of the disallowance motion, will be used partly to fund these four additional. Um, uh, positions that were announced for the Federal Circuit Court in the last budget, and those fee increases will be used for other things as well. It's partly to fund these new four positions. Minister. Well, so, uh, has the government, as I say, the government announced these four new judicial, new judicial positions in the Federal Circuit Court in last year's budget? Has, has the government ever made public uh, that fulfilling that commitment would require? increases to court fees that are now being proposed? It was, it was set out in the budget papers and in the Senate at the time. Senator Watts. Sorry. I haven't um, had an opportunity to review the budget papers, but you're assuring the Senate that that detail was made clear in the budget, the, the detail being that fee increases would be required to pay for a commitment the government was making in the budget. I can go and have a look at the budget papers and see that, can I? Minister. I'm also instructed that it was set out in the AG's budget media release. So it is absolutely made public. Senator Watts. Thank you. Um, we'll obviously go and have a look at that, uh, that could, because that was certainly news to me. Um, the, I also just want to briefly return to um, the deal that the government has done with Senator Patrick um, in return for his support in this legislation. Um, why, why is it exactly that its own? Oh, oh, sorry. Is there any other registry apart from the Adelaide registry that is receiving additional family court resources uh, in conjunction with this bill? Minister. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Um, we have announced that there will be an additional judge appointed. The location for that judge um, has not been fixed, and uh, we will consult with the head of jurisdiction about where that is most needed, and um, that's how it will be placed. Senator Watts. And when was that announcement made about the extra judge? Uh, if I'm wrong about that, I'll, I'll correct the record. But Senator Watts. That announcement about an extra judge that might end up somewhere else was made two years ago, so it's got nothing to do with this legislation at all. Minister. It's legislation because it was related to this bill. Um, this bill wasn't passed then. <laughs> the bill is being dealt with now. Senator Watts. Uh, um, the 
but in terms of announcements made this year that are clearly related to the passage of this bill, it's only the Adelaide Registry that is receiving extra resources. That's correct, isn't it? Minister. Senator Watt, I don't know how much more clear I can make it. All of the things that I set out in the summing up, summing up speech are um, additional resources that come as a part of a package um, for this bill. Um, you will notice when you review the summing up speech that the additional judge um, for a location yet to be determined is listed in those items. Um, I don't see how I can make it any clearer than it is already provided. Senator Watts. So why is it only the Adelaide Registry that gets a special sweetheart deal with uh, involving four extra judges and a $14.3 million pilot? Minister. Dwight, I've answered the question. Senator Watts. I, I, no one has asked that question, uh, which is why is it only the Adelaide Registry um, that is getting the special sweetheart deal of four additional judges and a $14.3 million pilot? Why only Adelaide? Uh, Senator Patrick, is that a point of order? No. No, I'm just waiting for the minister to respond, and then I'll give you the call. Minister. Um, I've outlined the additional resources that come from um, this bill. I've outlined the additional resources from previous budgets. It can't be made any clearer than that. Uh, Senator, well, so I, uh, Senator Patrick has been chafing at the bit. So <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. This may help. Uh, um, Senator Watt. Uh, actually, just to save some time, I'd also like uh, to just seek leave to table a document which was referred to in Senator Watt's speech because I'm going to ask a couple of questions of the minister. It was uh, leave granted. But uh, what is I, the document? I have foreshadowed. It's the uh, it's a it's a New South Wales Bar Association uh, proposal on uh, time for a, a family court of Australia 2.0, which uh, Senator Watt um, uh, referred to in his. Uh, Second reader yesterday. Is leave granted? Leave is granted. Thank you. So, I'd, I'd, but, but first of all, I'll just go to uh, you know, so, some of the um, claims being made uh, by the Labor Party. I just want to put on the record that I've been involved in this bill for uh, well over two years. Uh, I was involved in the Senate inquiry back in 2000 and uh, December 2018. Um, and since that time, I have been advocating to the Attorney General for additional resources for South Australia. That's my job as a South Australian senator. So I want to make it very clear that the measures that have been announced uh, by uh, the Assistant Attorney today are measures that I had talked to and advocated to the Attorney General two years ago. Okay? This is not some, uh, f you know, some, uh, something that, that came, was come to overnight. Um, uh, I, as a South Australian senator, will always advocate for South Australia. And I point out that there's nothing that stops uh, Senator Watt from wandering over to the Attorney General's office and, and advocating for the registry in, in Brisbane, if, if, he, if he chooses to. Unfortunately, he's bound by party lines, which, uh, if you look at the constitution, I know you know it because you're a very uh, learned uh, a lawyer, um, uh, Senator Watt. You'll note that there, in, in the constitution, we don't have parties. We don't have parties in the in the constitution. We have senators that represent their state. And what you, you know, what you may have done in failing to to advocate for Queensland. Uh, is you might, you've put your party ahead of your state. I proudly stand here and say that I have uh, advocated for my state to deal with a, an issue that I know uh, uh, has caused difficulties for, for the community in South Australia, and that being uh, a lack of uh, resources in, in South Australia. Please do not stand up in the chamber, Senator Watt, and suggest there is anything wrong with a South Australian senator advocating for resources for South Australia, and I'm very clear, make it very, very clear, um, this arrangement I made with the Attorney General in the last 
parliament. This is not an overnight thing. I've been advocating for this for well over two years. And I'm very grateful that, uh, uh, that the government has listened to, to my advocacy. I've presented my case and the attorney has listened and the attorney has granted these resources. Try it. You're a new, you're a, uh, uh, through you, um, Mr Acting uh, Deputy President, uh, uh, Senator Watt is a Queensland senator, but he fails to, uh, you know, as far as I'm aware, and he can stand up and, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, uh, hasn't gone to the attorney and sat down with him and said, this is what I'd like for Brisbane. This is what I'd like to have happen uh, in the Brisbane registry. He doesn't because he's got to comply with his, uh, with his party guidelines. So I just wanted to clarify that in relation to the, to the advocacy that I've, I've uh, had for South Australia for, for some time. Now I just want to go to just some issues. Um, uh, and I might point out throughout this entire process I've been engaging with uh, uh, Mr Dreyfus in, in, the, in the other place, uh, respectful conversations. Uh, and I won't go to the nature of those conversations, but in almost every conversation I've had with him, I've asked him what the alternative arrangements would be. And you revealed tonight, Senator Watt, that uh, you, you don't have alternative arrangements. You're going you're to make those arrangements uh, public uh, just prior to the next election. I wanted to see what the alternate might have been to the government's proposition, and the Labor Party would not tell me. In uh, your second reader, I listened very carefully to it, Senator Watt, you spelt out uh, or you advocated the New South Wales Bar Association's model. And I just want to go to uh, page uh, six of the document that I tabled. It talks about lack of resources uh, in the courts across both governments, but it also goes and says the family court can be a gold star institution once again but this would require reforms in two key areas. One of them is resourcing. The other one is structural improvement to unify the family law system by creating a single family court. Now, I just asked the minister, isn't it the effect of this bill to create a single court, a single point of entry um, uh, you know, under, under the, the, a name which is now called the, the, the Federal Circuit and Family Law Court? Minister. Yes. Senator Watt did get up rather quickly. Sorry, Senator Patrick. I thought it was. Senator Watt. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. I thought it was necessary to get on my feet quickly to defend my honour against this scandalous attack from Senator Patrick. Um, and he has accused me of failing in my duties to the people of Queensland. I, of course, would argue that by opposing this bill, as all Labor senators are doing, I that's how I'm fulfilling my duties to the Queensland public, because this is bad law uh, that will make family law matters worse for people who are already struggling with a failing system. So, unfortunately, uh, Senator Patrick does not have the same principled position on this uh, that Labor senators and, indeed, other crossbenchers senators, senators do as well. But that's a matter for Senator Patrick if he wants to do a deal uh, with the government and ignore his principles. Um, the, um, again. Now that we have learned, uh, when, when did the government agree to dedicate additional resources to the Adelaide registry uh, and not to other registries? Minister. I don't accept the premise that we have um, not provided resources in other places. There are a range of resources provided as a consequence of this bill, including, as I've already outlined, resources that will be ultimately located in places other than Adelaide. Senator Watt. When did the government agree to the additional judges, registrar and pilot in Adelaide? Minister. It was finalised as a part of discussions about um, making sure that the bill was um, suitable to the crossbench um, I couldn't give you a precise date, but it was something that evolved as a consequence of um, the interest that has been taken by the crossbench in getting this law right over a period of time. Senator Watt. So we're talking in the last few days the government has agreed uh, to the, these additional resources for Adelaide. 
uh, to ensure that the bill is suitable for a particular crossbencher. Minister. Uh, Senator Watt. Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Um, I'm not sure if the minister is aware of the workload uh, in the Adelaide registry relative to other registries. Um, would it not be fair for the government, if it's, if it's of a mind to allocate more resources to the Adelaide registry, would it not be appropriate and fair for the government to dedicate similar resources to other registries in the country that have at least the same or bigger workload issues? Minister. Um, the needs of the court are regularly considered, and um, these things are always under consideration. Senator Watt. Is the minister aware, for instance, and I note that the, the minister is a senator for Queensland, as are you, Mr Acting Deputy President, and I would expect that the, senator, that the minister would be uh, advocating heavily for the needs of Queensland registries. Uh, is the minister aware, for instance, that the average time between the date on which a matter is filed and the date on which judgments are being delivered in Adelaide is currently 20.2 months, whereas in the Rockhampton registry uh, it's 21.3 months and in Brisbane it's 23.8 months. Why is it then, Minister, as a senator for Queensland, um, that the Adelaide registry is receiving additional resources when Brisbane and Rockhampton, for example, have bigger workload issues and longer delays for applicants in the court. Minister. Um, thank you, Senator Watt. And you're right, I do advocate very fiercely for the needs of Queensland. And so um, Queenslanders watching these proceedings will be pleased to know that um, the Lighthouse Project pilot, um, for which funding has recently been allocated by the government, is operational in Queensland. And indeed, there is um, funding improved as part of the most recent budget as, as a consequence in particular of the advocacy of Queensland senators uh, from the coalition side in particular uh, for upgrades for um, improved and safer facilities in, for instance, the Rockhampton registry. So I don't accept your premise of your question. There are enormous investments being made in Queensland. Senator Watt. Thank you, Mr Acton, Deputy President. Um, thank you for enlightening the chamber about those investments. But uh, neither of those investments will do anything about the lengthy delays that are being experienced by family law uh, parties in either Rockhampton or Brisbane, will they? Um, uh, Minister. I beg your pardon, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. Thankfully, this bill will. Senator Watt. Minister, are you aware that the Cairns Registry, in the Cairns Registry, currently it takes 41.2 months well over three years after a matter is filed in the family law jurisdiction uh, before, on average, judgments are being delivered. So in Cairns, 41.2 months, well over three years, to have a family law matter finalised, and yet the government decides to invest additional resources in Adelaide. What's so bad about Cairns? Why doesn't Cairns deserve the same as Adelaide uh, when the weight is more than double the weight it is in Adelaide? Minister. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I'm glad you raised that question, Senator Watt, because it provides an opportunity to explain the good work that the Chief Justice is currently doing in Cairns. And there can be a tendency uh, for distortion in some of the statistics because, for instance, um, there are some matters that can be finalised quickly because they are simple matters. Some matters are quite complex. Um, there's also inconsistency between different judges as to whether they um, tackle the tough ones first and, and get those reserve judgments out first, or whether they deal with some of the smaller fish um, and leave those more difficult ones um, on the shelf to be dealt with after the little ones. Um, it means that in Cairns, the practices um, of the judicial officer has meant that um, there was a practice of dealing with the simpler matters first, and so uh, I'm pleased to say that the Chief Justice um, is actively tackling um, that right now um, to make sure that 
the position of CANS will be even better because those longer, tougher ones are being tackled. Senator Watts. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Um, that's very reassuring, but the fact remains that in CANS currently, people are waiting twice as long to have family law matters resolved as they are in Adelaide. So I again ask you, why, doesn't, why is the CANS registry not getting the increase in resourcing that we're seeing in Adelaide? Is it because uh, there's no independent senator from CANS who is prepared to sell out their principles and do a deal with the government in the way that Senator Patrick has? Minister. There's, uh, I don't accept that pejorative premise for the question, but this entire bill will reduce the times um, that are taken for matters to progress through this court, and all people um, who use the court will benefit from that. Uh, Senator, Senator Watt, sorry, Senator Patrick, he was up just before you. Senator Watt. Thanks, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Um, Minister, can you advise uh, the Senate whether any other commitments, particularly in relation to the AAT, have been made to Senator Patrick, uh, whether they be changes to resourcing of the AAT, structure of the AAT, procedure of the AAT? Have any uh, commitments been made by the government to Senator Patrick in relation to changes to the AAT? Minister. Um, Senator Watt, um, the the statistics that are provided for how long it takes to finalise a matter um, are demonstrative of the cases that have concluded, right? if we, if we understand that. Um, the, the very fact that looking at the statistics for CANS um, shows that in the six months to the 1st of January 2021, the matters that are concluded have figure 41.2 shows that there has been an active strategic and careful tackling of the oldest cases to clear them out, to make sure that there is resolution of those matters instead of letting them hang around. Um, the people of Cairns should be um, comforted to see that spike in number because it means the oldest, longest cases are cleared rather than hanging around. Senator Patrick. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. I just want to go to uh, the question of advocacy, and I'll just describe to those that might be listening how, how, yeah, how things might work at a pragmatic uh, level. As a South Australian senator, um, I often, t uh, I often um, take advantage of the fact that Senator Rustin is a South Australian senator and a minister, and throughout uh, my engagement over the last uh, three years with, uh, uh, with, you know, in, in relation to matters uh, dear to my heart, uh, dear to my constituents' hearts, uh, often I will uh, contact Senator Rustin and uh, talk to her about wh whether it be wine, whether it be water, whether it be a social security matter. I take advantage of the fact that uh, she's in a, a position of power as a minister and uh, I've got close access to her because I can just pick up the phone and say, can I have a coffee with you, please? So it's in that context I wonder, uh, we've got an, attorney, an assistant attorney general who's a Queenslander, I just would uh, ask uh, the minister, the, the assistant attorney, how many times has Senator Watt picked up the phone to you and said, I'd like to have a sit down with you and talk to you about lack of resources in the family uh, court, federal circuit court, or indeed uh, in, in either Brisbane or, or Cairns? I just Order. wonder how many times he's stood up, he's, he's picked up the phone and taken advantage of the fact you're a, now a, you're a Queenslander, you're a, you're a minister, in that portfolio, he clearly has particular concerns. How many times has he picked up the phone and advocated for Queensland to you about that issue? Minister. If Senator Watt and I had had conversations, I wouldn't reveal um, private conversations, but as we haven't had any, um, I think I can put that on the record. Senator. Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. Look, uh, there needs some clarification here, and a lot of misperceptions have been thrown around this uh, chamber. And the fact is, um, for Labor saying what deals have been done, okay, the fact is that Senator Patrick has actually got an extra judge or registrar, whatever. Good on him. Good luck to him. No problem. Because I remember talking to the former Prime Minister Turnbull to get the backpack attacks through. The Greens were paid, were given $100 million to land care. Also, for Jackie Lambie's vote, Senator Lambie's vote in Tasmania, 
for the uh, tax cuts was $150 million towards housing. Good on them. No problem. That's our job here is to stand up for our state. Now I'll put on the record. Have I got any deals done? None. Zilch. Nothing. Because I didn't ask for it. Because I believe in this policy and I have called for the merger of these two courts that the family court law courts need to be addressed. And that's exactly what's done here. You're playing politics because you're not really looking at facts and you have not been involved to understand what is happening in our family law system. The facts are that the, in the 2021-2021 budget, the government provided the Family Circuit Court with funding for an additional Family Law Division judge and five Family Law Judicial Registrars. This will further help support the work of the court to alleviate pressure on judges. As the CE registrars, we're talking about registrars. As the CEO of the Federal Circuit Court told the Senate committee into the bill, <clears throat> the Chief Justice, Chief Judge has also focused supporting judges through greater assistance from senior registrars and registrars aimed at alleviating the workloads of and pressures on judges. Registrars are doing this by undertaking many high volume duty lists as well as interim and interlocutory disputes and by undertaking dispute resolution in both property and parenting disputes. There is a program at the moment, the Registrar Assistant Pilot. The Federal Circuit Court has recently introduced the Registrar Assistant Pilot, whereby judges can be provided with assistance by a registrar conducting duty list work, ADR or FDR, or other appropriate court work. In the first six months of the pilot operation, registrars have provided the equivalent of 128 days of assistance dealing with over 1,500 procedural um, hearings. It's not all about the judges, and that's what you're going on about. It's about clearing the backloads of what's in the courts. Now, I visited the court in Brisbane last week and I spoke to them. They have got, because of the COVID, they've had extra cases they've put on, but, the, but what they have done is they've cleared those cases, but also they've cleared approximately about 13, 15 per cent of the backlog as well. I mentioned it before, the Lighthouse project that's been introduced, that is streamlining. By Merging the two courts together, you have two sets of rules, two sets of processes. This is merging it all into the one process, which is easier for the Australian people to manage going through the system. The Lighthouse project is done online. They can sort out the domestic violence program, um, uh, problems that they have. Then they know how to triage it, how to put them through the system. They're wanting to actually, in what is happening, even contravention orders. That has been a big backlog and taking over seven months in the family court to actually be heard and 6.9 months in the federal circuit court. That now they're addressing to address within hopefully 14 days. These are the things that need to be, um, if we're honest with ourselves, it's not just about the judges. There's a lot of other things that need to be addressed if we're going to uh, make improvements in the family law courts. Yes, families have had to wait a long time to get their hearings heard. The Family, law, uh, family Circuit Court deals with 90 per cent of the cases that are actually heard. I want to say this also. In the 2020-21 budget, the government announced it is providing significant investment of around $120 million over four years from 2021 for the family law system. This includes funding for family law services, $87.3 million, an additional family law federal court judge, five additional family law registrars and further support staff. Funding for the federal family law courts to continue operating specialist COVID-19 lists, $2.5 million. Additional funding for the family violence and cross-examination of parties scheme, 4.8 million. And this one, the relocation of family law court registries in Rockhampton and Launceston to safer and more secure premises of 7.7 million. So there is something for Tasmania. 
also funding to implement federal family violence orders of $1.8 million and a new case management system for the Family Court of Western Australia of $2.5 million. The government has also introduced legislation which has now passed this parliament to support the implementation of new family safety, safety risk screening and triage processes being piloted into the family law courts to be known as the Lighthouse Project with a $13.5 million government investment. So you can't say that this government sat on their hands and done nothing about it. As I said before, it is the Labor Party that sat on their hands and done nothing about it. Because when I was here in 1996 in the other place, I was talking about family law matters then. Nothing had happened over the years whatsoever. This is why I have been so involved in this, um, in the whole matter. I take my hat off to Rex Patrick that he's actually seen, you know, that he has and is supporting the government on this, as is One Nation. And I do believe that it is going to assist and help the people of, of Australia. Stop pay, playing the politics in this place and look at what is right for the Australian people. I'm sick and tired, and so are the people of Australia, fed up with knocking something purely for the fact of knocking it because you're on the opposition bench. If this is going to, and it has proven that it is going to help the Australian people, people are suffering out there, families are suffering, kids are suffering, and all you're worried about is your, your jobs in this place. It's about standing up and representing the Australian people the best that we can, come to a decision that is going to be beneficial to them and solve their problems. Because too many kids are being dragged away from their families, too many, too many people are suiciding, too many people are being murdered in this country through the family law system. And if this is part of the way of actually dealing with this and helping those families, and it's just not the mums and dads, it's about grandparents, it's about the extended families. I've heard it through this whole inquiry that we've gone through. So this is a start to mending the problems that we have. It's about time we actually try to stand up and agree together on what is best for this instead of nitpicking and carrying on with your politics and start working for the Australian people. Senator Patrick. Yeah, thank you. I, I, um, I just want to go back to the document that I tabled um, and uh, for the assistance of those who have a copy. Um, on page 11, it has a diagram of the model that uh, Senator Watt suggested would be the right model for uh, the future. This is the model of the, uh, of the New South Wales Bar Association, Association uh, Family Court of Australia 2.0. And I look at the diagram, and at the very bottom of it, it talks about a signal, single point of entry for all family law matters. Then it talks about a division two, which formally came from the family law jurisdiction of the Federal Circuit Court. Then it talks about a division one that uh, is, is the former, former Family Court of Australia, original jurisdiction. Then it shows an appeals division, which was the former Family Court appeals jurisdiction. Then uh, appeals to the, from, from the Family Law Appeals Division go to the High, to, to the high Court. Now that's exactly what is being um, done in this bill. So, uh, Minister, unless I've got this wrong, this is actually the model that uh, is being implemented by this bill. Is that not the case? Is, isn't, uh, isn't it effectively the very model that Senator Watt advocated for in his uh, second reader? Minister. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President, and, and thank you, Senator Patrick, for the question. Um, it is substantially um, the same as what is being proposed um, in this bill. I'll highlight the similarities and differences, if that's of some assistance. Um, the model that is proposed in the uh, two-point model um, does involve a single point of entry, and there is a single point of entry um, in what is contained in this bill. There are two divisions, just as in the two-point model, although um, it is slightly differently structured so that it's not necessary for all federal circuit court judges to resign and then get reappointed. The different structure that's been used avoids um, that inconvenience or that administrative consequence. Um, in relation to family law appeals, um, the two-point model envisaged a separate appeal division. 
uh, whereas there is an ability to um, appoint either a full court or a single judge to hear appeals in Division Two, and again appeals to the High Court in the usual way. So there are remarkable similarities between the New South Wales 2.0 model um, that was advocated for by Senator Watt and um, that which is proposed uh, by the government in this bill. Senator Patrick. I'm just wondering, maybe Senator Watt might wish to, wish to answer the question. Um, uh, I just wonder whether or not he's, he's talked to you about, uh, about you know, what is clearly a very similar structure to what he's advocating and uh, you know, has he made representations to you in his role as the uh, as the minister representing, oh, sorry, as the senator representing the uh, the shadow uh, attorney, uh, as to uh, you know what his fundamental issue is with the uh, with the uh, current bill, noting it's very similar to the model he proposes. Oh, sorry, minister. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President, um, Senator Patrick. Um, I haven't had any discussions of that nature, though it is worth noting that in what I understand was 2010, the then Labor government proposed a bill based on this model. Um, it was really not all that different <laughs> to the bill that is before this court, uh, before this um, chamber, and um, it represents some irony that we are um, arguing at length today. Senator Green. I have come down to this debate um, today in, in the middle of a really important discussion and um, uh, essentially because there has been a bit of back and forth about the waiting times in far north Queensland as opposed to those waiting times in Adelaide. But can I just firstly deal with this issue around um, the 2.0 model? Um, because the main difference, as the minister says, there's, there's some similarities. There's some similarities. One of the main differences is that the 2.0 model is a specialised model. It's a specialised model. It is, it, is, it is proposed by people who are experts in this field. It is proposed by people who are experts in this field. And we take the advice of those stakeholders who are working in this field day in, day out, dealing with matters, dealing with family violence matters, and that's the model that they have proposed. And it is different from the government's model and the model that you're voting for tonight because it's substantially supported by stakeholders, whereas this, whereas this model is opposed, is opposed by those organisations. And that, that matters. It counts for something because those people are the ones who are dealing with this on a daily basis. I also just wanted to address some of the comments that Senator Hanson um, said, because I think this is important in the context of we're talking about waiting times and, and the way that um, uh, people who are engaging with this uh, process, how long they have to wait to get some sort of resolution, which, as we know in Cairns, is about 41.2 months now. Um, Senator Hanson uh, comes at this with some justification and some of the things that she talks about, the stress that people go through, the terrible um, uh, conflict that is created through the family law system is certainly relevant and uh, no one is discounting that. Um, but can I say this, because I said it in my speech today, and I will call it out if the minister won't, when the, Senator Hanson makes comments that infers that somehow the family law system is the reason why people uh, commit family violence, well, that is wrong. That is wrong and it should be called out every single time that she says it. And it says a lot about this government and this minister that they don't call out those comments. Because Order. family violence— Senator Green, just remind you that personal invitations are not appropriate to ask you to withdraw that. Well, with— the, the imputation that the minister, by not challenging it, is agreeing with the assertion or is somehow deficient in her duty. Um, 
I don't. I mean, on the point of order, I, I don't see that I'm inferring anything other than that we. I am standing up here calling out those comments, and until this moment, I haven't heard the same comments from the minister. Yeah. I will get, no, no. I will withdraw and allow the minister to have that opportunity once Please I ask my question. Because it's an important distinction to make, and, it, and it's an important uh, component of the support that we see from that side of the chamber around these changes, that somehow they think that they can use family violence as a justification to make changes to the family court. And it's just not right, and it does need to be called out. But if I can just move on now to the substantive matter of the, uh, as I have learned tonight, some resourcing changes to the Adelaide Registry as opposed to other registries around the country. Um, we know that in Cairns there is an acute waiting problem, and it's an example that's been used. I'm sure there's other registries that are um, problematic. But I have met with the North Queensland Women's Legal Service on many occasions. Um, and the number one thing that they wanted to talk to me the first time I spoke to them was about this merger bill and their concerns about the bill and their concerns about the length of time that it's taking to get matters heard through the Cairns Registry. So what we have heard tonight is that there will be resources being delivered to the registry in South Australia, as I have inferred from the debate tonight, because some sort of deal has been done between Senator Patrick and, and between the government. Order. Senator Patrick, interjections of this order. Well, Senator Patrick, I take that interjection and I will tell you tonight that I advocate every single day for every member of the far north Queensland community and every single person who is affected by family violence Order. and you and advocating for one portion of the community in this aspect is derelict to your duties as a senator of this parliament senator, because senator every senator single Green, person please resume your seat senator patrick interjections of this orderly senator green i remind you to address your remarks through the chair you have the call i would like to know from the minister. Sorry, Senator Green. Senator Hanson is on her feet. Do you have a point of order? I do have a point of order. Senator Hanson. Thank you. Senator Green has made a comment that my reference tonight, my remarks tonight uh, on family violence is a reason why the merger of the two courts, we are supporting this. At no point in my speech tonight or on this floor of parliament have I ever referred to family violence as a reason for the merger of the two courts for supporting this. I want a withdrawal. You claim to be misrepresented, Senator Hanson. I do. Thank you. I'll take that as a debating point. Um, you have made your point, Senator Green. You have the call. Thank you. What I would like to know um, from the minister, given that a deal has now been done to uh, divert resources or send resources, I don't know if they're being diverted. I'm sure you've answered that in a question previously. Given that there will be resources going to the Adelaide Registry, when we know that the Cairns Registry is in acute need of resources, that it has been starved of resources and there are acute wait times, have you met, as a Queensland senator or in your now position, with the North Queensland Women's Legal Service about this bill? And did you give them a reassurance that this bill would reduce waiting times in Cairns. Minister. Um, Senator Green, there was an awful lot in that um, contribution. Um, the bill will, across the board, reduce waiting times. Um, as I have stated in my earlier answers to questions, um, there has been some um, considerable and commendable work done by the Chief Justice to clear um, the cases that represented um, the oldest ones from the Cairns Registry. And so there's been a significant improvement demonstrated um, on the current numbers. So I'll rely on my previous answer there. Um, there was earlier commentary that I'll take as a question 
um, about what I'll um, paraphrase as an allegation that this bill would somehow reduce specialisation. I don't think that mischaracterises your concern. Um, the idea of a loss of specialisation um, is, quite frankly, false. The very same specialist federal circuit court judges that are hearing family law cases today in the federal circuit court, there are 40 of them, they exclusively hear uh, family law cases. They have an average of 25 years' experience in family law apiece. They will continue to hear family law cases um, in a merged court. Interestingly, um, the expertise that one can see at present in the family court is actually lower in the sense that the practitioners that have been appointed in that court are not exclusively family practitioners. And so, um, in many ways, um, this represents, at worst, the same level of specialisation um, and, at best, the opportunity for improvement. Um, it's worth saying, too, that um, to the extent that there has been a concern expressed that wraparound services, um, particularly in relation to family violence, might be affected, um, that is a misconception, um, and I referred earlier to the evidence of the CEO of the Family Court and Federal Circuit Court to the Senate Committee, who made it very clear um, that there is no difference in the wraparound services that are provided in the Family Court as compared to the Federal Circuit Court, because the court's internal family law services are shared between the courts. They are already identical. So again, um, there's no expectation um, that there will be a decline in wraparound services for those um, needing it, particularly in family violence cases. And one can expect um, no adverse impact on specialisation. And indeed, um, we have better specialisation at this point in time in the Federal Circuit Court than we do in the Family Court. Senator Patrick. Thank you. I just want to uh, go back to uh, the Cairns Registry and uh, you know, the comments made by Senator Green in terms of her uh, listening to her constituents and to people in her community. And, and, uh, that is indeed what I do, and, and I know that she does uh, 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 you know, work actively in, uh, in her uh, community. But when I listen, and I might put on the record that I attended all of the hearings in the last parliament in relation to this bill, which caused it to be substantially changed, rough, basically to the form that it is now, but even over the last couple of weeks. I have spoken to uh, people from the Law Council. I have spoken to uh, justices of the court. I have spoken to legal community services. Uh, I have spoken, indeed, to the Chief Justice of the Family Court and uh, the Deputy Chief Justice, former Attorney General under the Labor government, who, who introduced the bill. Uh, now, I won't go to the details of those con the conversation with the Chief Justice, but, I, but uh, I asked them to guide me in terms of whether or not uh, this bill will, would help them, and uh, the, the impression I walked away with was that it would. Um, the difference, perhaps, between uh, what I've done and what you may have done, Senator, uh, uh, through you, Chair Senator, Senator Green, may have done, is that having received all the information that uh, that was provided to me as I um, listened to the community uh, and various different stakeholders, I then turned and walked to the Attorney General's office and uh, had a conversation, uh, one of many conversations with the Attorney General. And uh, uh, indeed, I also recall having a, a conversation with the, um, uh, with the, with the Assistant Attorney outside the, the, the chamber just recently about this bill as well. So there's two parts of what you need to do. You need to uh, listen to the community and then you need to actually go to the people in power. That's a different prospect to probably what happens normally uh, uh, is where you go to caucus and you complain and you work up tactics and, you, and, and uh, all those sorts of things. That's not how you successfully advocate for your state. 
What you do is you pick up the phone and say, I'd like to speak to the Attorney General. I'm a senator for Queensland, and, uh, and I'm sure that uh, you, you would get an audience. And that's how you properly represent your state. That is pr properly how you that is properly how you represent your state. So I might ask the same question of the minister, the, the assistant attorney, who is, who is a Queenslander, so no doubt shares you know, lots of common views. Uh, um, I'd ask the assistant uh, attorney, how many times has Senator Green wandered up to you and sought a meeting in respect of uh, uh, you know, uh, court-related matters in Cairns? Minister. None. Senator Thorpe. Thank you, uh, Deputy Chair. The head of uh, Minister, the head of the Women's Legal Services of Australia said our opposition to the proposed merger of the family courts is centred on ensuring that the safety and best interests of the child and the safety of adult victim survivors of family violence in family law proceedings. Safety must come first in family law. What do you say to that? Minister. Um, we too think safety is an extremely important consideration, and that's why we have made, for instance, recent investments in improving um, safety facilities and the like in uh, Launceston and Rockhampton, for instance, um, that is an important consideration. The Lighthouse Project, an important investment that's all about um, family violence and safety. Um, these are extremely important considerations and they are at the forefront of what we do. Senator Thorpe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is the Minister, this is the head of the women's legal services of, a, of this country, who is very concerned about this bill and the proposed merger. Are you, do you, I mean, are you concerned that somebody uh, who is heading up an Australian Body such as a women's legal service. Are you concerned that she's concerned? Are you concerned about that? I mean, you're making decisions in this chamber where peak bodies, including the law council and others and judges, are saying that this is no good. Do, do you have any uh, comment about to, to those people? What's your comment to those people, please, Minister? Minister. Um, thank you, Mr Act Acting Deputy President. Um, Senator Thorpe, of course we um, listen to and we consider and we engage with um, organisations that have experience in these areas, um, and we will continue to do so in the time to come. Um, we are always open to new ideas um, or new strategies for improving people's safety. Um, that's part of the reason why we have um, invested in domestic violence units. It's part of the reason why we've invested in the Lighthouse Project. It's part of the reason why uh, we have invested in the kind of um, location upgrades um, that I referred to earlier. Um, safety is very important, and um, that's why we are doing what we're doing. Senator Thorpe. Thank you. Deputy Chair. Uh, the Minister, the PwC report commissioned to justify the proposal in the amended merger bills and was done without consulting key First Nations stakeholders. Why? Minister. Um, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Senator Thorpe, um, I don't accept the premise of the question in that um, you've suggested the only purpose of that report was some sort of reverse engineered kind of justification. That wasn't the case at all. Um, the consultation process um, that is constantly being um, engaged in involves all the heads of jurisdiction. This bill involved consultation with heads of jurisdiction who have on the ground 
um, understanding of the communities in which they work. And importantly, there was engagement with um, the multitude of reports um, that considered a range of issues, including those affecting um, Indigenous Australians. Um, and all of those were factored in and considered as a part of formulating the bill. Senator Hanson. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, Acting Deputy Chair. I'll come to you next, Senator. President. Um, just to um, add my experience to it, which I visited the Southport Court last week, which is a specialised court. We have about five in Queensland. And the specialised court deals with domestic violence. The court, and this is to alleviate, um, I can't remember the senator's name who raised this issue, but anyway, just to bring it to, to notice of the House, is that in the specialised court, they have actually um, do have areas. So if people have concerns about attending the court, they actually notify the court, security guards go outside, they escort them into the courthouse. Also, there is a section for men and there is a section for women to actually um, sit. There's also a special area that people, men or women, can go if they're very concerned or traumatised or they have any problems. We are addressing those concerns. The merger of the two courts is not, and the, you know, if you're raising the women's um, legal services, raising this as a concern because the merger of the two courts shouldn't go ahead purely based on the safety. Nothing's going to change whether we leave the system the way it is now, or whether you merge the two courts. It is not going to change. But they have been addressing the concerns of many Australians, men and women, who are faced with domestic violence to ensure that their safety and they provide that safety to them. Thank you. Senator Thorpe. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Minister, the Attorney General's Department gave evidence to the inquiry into family, domestic and sexual violence in December 2020 that there hasn't been a specific study of what impact the merger would have with respect to family and domestic violence issues. Why are you persisting with this flawed proposal? Sorry, Minister. Um, I've made it clear how this bill does not adversely affect specialisation, um, and I don't have anything further to add to that matter. Senator Poole. I must keep going. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Uh, Minister, can you tell me where in the final report by the Australian Law Reform Commission's review of the family law system final report it recommends that you collapse one court into the other? Minister. It doesn't. Senator Watt. Um, thanks, Mr Acting Deputy President. I, I just wanted to go back. I didn't actually get a question, an answer to one of my earlier questions to Senator Stoker, which was has the government made any other commitments to Senator Patrick, uh, particularly in relation to the AAT? Minister. No. Um, but while I've got Senator um, Watt, I might make. I beg your pardon, Senator Lambie. I'll, I'll be quick. Um, earlier, Senator Watt put to me that um, there were four existing vacancies, and I agreed to that. Um, I've just checked it with. Um, the office, and I have the numbers in front of me now. Um, the existing vacancies are actually six. Five are um, in the recruitment process. The sixth one represents um, the very recent notice given by um, Justice Barker from Tasmania, and uh, that was on the 31st of January. And there's no candidate for that one yet, but the others are all in an, an advanced process. Senator Lambie. Thank you, Mr. Aiken, Deputy President. I just wanted to find out a little bit more about the 14.3 million pilot program for Adelaide. Could you just give me a little bit more detail on that? That's, that was over four years, I think. And when does it start? Can you, can you just give me some detail on what that's all about? Minister. Thank you, Mr. Aiken, Deputy President, Senator Lambie. Um, it is a pilot project for um, legal assistance services. Um, and we'll have some more detail to flesh that out shortly. Senator Lambie. Oh, thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Is that the only detail you have for $14.3 million that you just gave for a pilot program in South Australia? You've got nothing else to add to that. You, is that it? 
is that the bare bones, that's, that's what the 14.3 million has, you haven't actually gone any further than that. And if you can't answer that, maybe you can get up and tell me, or reply to me if that's okay, through the Chair, Senator Patrick, what you are hoping to achieve out of that $14.3 million that you're getting for the pilot program. Minister. Um, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Um, I'm happy for uh, Senator Patrick to um, add anything he would like to, but um, I can say that we will have more to say about that in due course. Um, but the purpose for which it is to be applied is for legal assistance, uh, for a need that has been identified um, and brought to us by Senator Patrick. Um, he's evidenced the need for it, and um, that's why the action is being taken. Senator Patrick. Yeah, look, I'll just uh, put on the record that no, I, I, I haven't uh, agreed anything in great detail with the attorney, but after consultation with stakeholders, one of the areas that is lacking in the family uh, court area, particularly for those that need legal aid, is that they often go to legal aid and they get, uh, they get um, uh, assistance up until the point where they get uh, when, when they're basically listed to go to court. And in those circumstances, uh, what happens then is the, the uh, person who's been supported, in, a sen in essence, gets cut loose. They either have to appoint a lawyer or a barrister or self-represent. And uh, I, this is not, a com this is not a, uh, a, a, in any way uh, disparaging of, of any self-represented litigant. Often they are forced because they have no other alternative. So one of the things I have talked to the attorney about is the ability to um, uh, perhaps well, you know, to perhaps look at uh, funding beyond the advice stage into the court stage, and that has direct application in respect of this bill because one of the aims of this bill is to streamline processes. Again, no criticism of any self-represented litigant, but they can tie up the court because of their lack of expertise. I know they're only doing it because, because they have to. And this may be an avenue, and as I said, the, the details are, are, are not sorted out, um, but, but the general principles are that we can, we can perhaps extend this, and that's why it's a pilot. Uh, you will have heard the, the assistant attorney talk about a pilot uh, to, to work out whether or not uh, uh, by s spending money in that area, we can actually assist people and, at the same time, reduce uh, delays uh, in the court. I also want to respond briefly to uh, Senator Watt in relation to the AAT. I just want to confirm you know, my discussions with the government in relation to the AAT have mostly centred around my concerns about appointees. Uh, and you might recall. On the 1st of August 2019, I moved a motion uh, in the Senate relating to the AD, uh, the um, uh, relating to the AAT, uh, calling on the federal government to urgently introduce a bill into, to, into the Parliament to uh, to appeal paragraph 73B of the Act, which is the which is the section that allows attorneys on both sides to appoint uh, some might call mates. Others might call uh, non-legally qualified people to the AAT, and, and you know what? There will be silence in the chamber right now because uh, because you know both sides have made questionable appointments to the AAT, and I put that to a vote, and I uh, I'm looking at the Hansard now, looking at the journal, and Senator Watt voted against that. So that's my uh, most recent. Uh, discussions uh, uh, in, in public and in, in uh, this sort of place in relation to the AAT. Sadly, I was advocating for a, uh, a change rec recommended by no uh, less than Justice Callanan, who had done a review into the AAT, uh, to remove that particular passage, uh, that particular provision that allowed those sorts of appointees, because I'm of the strong belief that in order to be uh, in the AAT, you really do need to be qualified, not um, not uh, be there because uh, someone, uh, because someone, uh, uh, one of your friends uh, has has influence in in this building. So, uh, I just wanted to put that on the record. Uh, that's my uh, from, from memory. That's my last 
dealing with the AAT with the government and with the Labor Party. Unfortunately, in both instances, I was not supported. Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. We're approaching the time where we're, we are going to be voting on this bill and the amendments that the Greens have put up and, and the government's amendment. As I have said in this place, that I have been calling for a long time that we need to do something about the family law courts and to address the needs and concerns of many Australians their, and their extended families, but it's also about the children as well. What I hope now, after this debate, that the Greens and the Labor Party will see that this needs to be a unified agreement to actually start working for the people of Australia. You have not shown to me any reason why I should shift my vote from, from supporting the government on the merger of the two courts, which I have seen it's already started to happen with the Lighthouse project, the merger of the two courts, where they're working together to improve the access to the courts for families of Australia, to shorten the periods of time, to address their needs and concerns. This can only improve it even further, and yet you are still so reluctant to, to um, admit that you have got it wrong. The whole debate is not about domestic violence, which Senator Green tried to bring up that I've used domestic violence as a reason for my supporting the merger of the two courts. I never went, mentioned it once on the floor of Parliament. So, Order. so I've never mentioned that once on the floor of Parliament about domestic violence and why I have supported it. I've stated my case why it needs to be done. So this is again from the Greens, from the Labor Party, is to twist my words into making me sound totally different to what I am. I'm used to it. It's happened all over the past years because they try to denigrate me and twist my words to suit them so that the people don't really know the truth. The fact is that we do need to work together, and I've said this before, it is about the Australian people. It is not about us. It's about the Australian people. I would not support, and I think that anyone who knows me in this place, that I do my research, I actually am passionate about what I believe in. My vote cannot be bought, and I am standing up for the Australian people. And that's what we have to do here, and I will reiterate that. It is up to us to make the right decisions to move forward for the people of this country. As I said, there's so much harm being done. We got it wrong with the Family Law Act of 1975. We have moved on from there. We are now Order. at a stage where we may Senator have to make a difference. Hanson, thank you. It being 9.30, the time allotted for the debate on the bills has expired. In accordance with the resolution agreed to earlier today, I will now put the questions on the remaining stages of the bill, firstly dealing with the Australian Greens amendment on sheet 1207. The question is that the request for amendments to the Government Amendment 1 moved by the Australian Greens on sheet 1207 be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. I think the ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
So the question is that the request for amendments to Government Amendment 1, moved by the Australian Greens on sheet 1207, be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. Order. I appoint Senator Urquhart as teller for the ayes and Senator McGrath as teller for the noes.
order. There being 28 ayes and 30 noes, the matter was resolved in the negative. The question now is that amendments uh, 1 to 3 on sheet UN126 moved by the government be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? I believe the ayes have it. Pursuant to order, I shall now report the bills. The committee has considered the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia Bill 2019 and the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia Consequential Amendments and Trans Transition Provisions Bill 2019 and agreed to them with amendments. The question now is that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bills be now passed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? Uh, I believe the ayes have it. Ring the bells for one minute. Lock the doors. Order. So the question now is that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bills be now passed. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator McGrath as teller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as teller for the noes. I didn't have to say. Order. There being 30 ayes and 28 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. Uh, I now uh, call the clerk. 
A bill for an act relating to the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia and for other purposes. A bill for an act to deal with consequential and transitional matters in connection with the Federal, Court, Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia Act 2019 and for related purposes. Pursuant to order agreed earlier today, the Senate stands adjourned and will meet again tomorrow at 9.30 a.m.